Would you like to receive a samurai helmet for free from Iron Mountain Armory? Then check out the description below to learn how to participate and win one. Also, I'm going to be live on the 15th of this month, 10 p.m. Italian time, which is 3 p.m. Central time. Hope to see you there. If I were to find myself in a real life to death dual situation and I was only allowed to use either a katana or a European medieval sword, which one would I use? Hello noble ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking, thank you so much for stopping by. Now this is a little bit of a strange scenario, isn't it? I mean, we are in 2019, live to death, real dual situation with swords. But here's the thing, this is a thought experiment, and I know that most of you, well, I'm gonna say all of you who watch my content and subscribe to my channel, well, you like swords. Swords are something we are passionate about. And oftentimes the question, what is your favorite sword, is asked to us, I mean, I get that asked all the time. But whenever I give that answer, and I'm sure that it's a similar situation with you, so bear with me and let me know if it's the same for you, but when someone asks me what's your favourite sword, you know, I don't have, even have to think about it very much. In my case, for example, it's the one-handed European medieval arming sword. That's my favourite. But why is it? See, sometimes you might think that it's your favourite because you think that that's the very best, but so, so talking about practicality, but in reality, I mean, whenever I think of my answer, that European medieval arming sword, it's not just the practical aspects of it. Aesthetics also play a part in my favorites. The fact that knights used it, and I, and I love the medieval knights, also plays a, a strong role in it becoming my favorite sword. But a thought experiment like the one of being in a real dual situation really takes all the aesthetics and all the cultural aspects behind it away because they don't factor in anymore. It's just a matter of, I might die here, I need to defend my life, so which sword would I really use in that situation? And I'm going to ask you the same question. So let's imagine this scenario to give a little bit of a, of a context, because of course context is very important. I'm an influencer, let's say I'm going to this big event and then a group of people kidnap me and they put me in a room together with someone who's like a fencer and they tell me at gunpoint, they tell me, hey, you can choose between a katana and a European arming sword, which I do own, by the way, both. And they say, you can use either any of these two and you need to duel to death and kill that guy. If you don't, we will shoot you dead. If you win, you can go home. So it's a very unreal scenario, but it helps you as a thought-provoking experiment to really focus and think which of these two swords would I really choose? Not my favorite because of taste, which one would I use? So the first thing I would probably ask is, are we allowed to wear armor? If we were in, in male armor, for example, I would probably choose the more pointy sword, you know, try to half sword or maybe even even the idea of using an arming sword the other way around, using a murder stroke, you know, that, that would influence. But let's say that we are in a unarmored duel. So both swords, you know, are, are viable options because bladed weapons do work best when you are in a duel with no armor involved. And the reason for that is that with, you know, with a sword, with a bladed implement, uh, you don't really need that much strength to really incapacitate an opponent because if you just manage to get your blade in contact with his, for example, his right forearm and then you perform a draw cut and you open the muscles of his forearm, he won't be able to use his weapon anymore to wield it properly and you can win. You can then go for a kill. With a mace, you can't really perform any draw cut or push cut. You really need to hit him hard and break his bones. So a mace is an excellent option when you're fighting against someone who is armored and you cannot use a blade that will, you know, to cut the way I've just said. But if you were in an unarmored situation, I would rather go for a blade. So now we've got the katana and the arming sword. Well, here's the thing. My further, then my next question would be, am I allowed to use a shield? Because if they say that I can use a shield, then my choice would definitely be shield and my European arming sword. Because I feel that regardless of what my opponent is using, this will give me an advantage, or maybe even up things. So if my opponent is also using a sword and a shield, well, we are, we are, we are even, and then we'll see. It's just a matter of skill. But if my opponent is using a katana, for example, then I have the advantage. Even if he's using a long sword, I believe I have the advantage. Because in my experience in sparring, and I do quite a lot of sparring, um, sh sword and shield is the best combination you can have for a duel unless spears are involved. And since now we're talking swords, definitely I would choose my arming sword together with a shield. Also because I believe that the arming sword, since it's designed to be used one-handed, it would be the best perfect combination, both in terms of, of balance and the overall geometric shape of the weapon, 
to be used together with a shield, whereas a katana, as you know, is a two-handed weapon. Yes, you can wield it one-handed, but I would definitely prefer, prefer the arming sword because it's designed to be used one-handed, rather than having a two-handed weapon used one-handed with a shield. But what if shields weren't allowed? Well, if shields weren't allowed, then, then my answer might surprise you, I would choose a katana. So why would I choose a katana over the one-handed arming sword? Well, the thing is, in my case, I have been trained in the usage of both, and I am a mediocre fencer in both. But I feel that I would rather use two hands to fight if I were in a, in a situation where there was no shield involved than just using one hand. Also because we're not talking rapier, we're not talking swords that were developed in an age where put forward your best arm and you've got some protection in your hand because of the full hilt at the full guard and then you can and then you use it to thrust. We're talking about still a cut and thrust weapon and I believe that a katana would do better than a single-handed one-arming uh, one-handed arming sword uh, if no shields were involved. I would just feel better, better leverage. Of course we're talking slight advantages, we're not talking like a complete game changer. If my opponent is a better fencer than me, he could still win using a one-handed sword against me using a katana. But I'm saying that looking at myself and my sets of skill, I would find the katana better than a one-handed uh, arming sword if no shield was involved, regardless of the fact that my favorite would be the one-handed arming sword. Now, this is where the situation becomes more interesting, because as you know, I also own a nodachi and I have handled long swords. So, what if these swords were also available? Would I still stick to, a one, to the katana or would I still stick to the one-handed uh, arming sword in combination with a shield. Well, still shield and one-handed arming sword is my choice, regardless of length of blades available. So having said that, um, if shield was not available again, um, then I would opt for a longer blade because it, I would feel that a range advantage of, against my opponent would increase my chances of winning the fight. But I would not go for Japanese. Then I would resort to a longsword. It is my opinion that the European shape, so the cross guard with the, with the straight um, double edged blade, is better optimized with longer blades. I think that a Nodachi, and I handled the Nodachi, you know, katana sized um, Japanese swords, they are good, but when you go, they, they move, they, they handle really well. But when you move to the Nodachi, believe me, handling a Nodachi is a nightmare. I don't know the physics of it. I don't know if it's because of the slight curvature. I don't know if it's because it's single edge. I don't know if it's maybe it's because the blade is actually thinner. So when it's really, really long, it becomes so unwieldy that I would never dream of using an odachi in a duel, never. But a European longsword instead, maybe because the blade is larger, maybe because it has a different distal taper, it could be that the distal taper helps. Maybe because the the fact that it's double edged. I, I have no idea why, guys. Maybe the idea that there is a the, the, the cross guard, the hilt. I don't know what it does. What does it? But a European longsword it gives you the range advantage, but it still handles really, really well. So if the European longsword was into the equation, then boom, that over any katana, that over any nodachi. So now that we have discussed all these options, I'd like to come to the actual point of this video, because you might think, you know, well, okay, but what is the point of this video? The point of this video is that whenever we ask the question, what's the best sword, the katana or the long sword, the katana or the European medieval sword? Well, very much, as you can see, depends on context. Who am I fighting with? How armored is he? How good is he? What weapon is he using? Because the choice of what weapon should be used will very much depend on this, on, on, on what the answer to these questions is. There is no superior blade. There are just blades that are better at doing in certain context situations and there are swords that are worse in the same context. You know, we, on YouTube this situation with European medieval swords versus katana has been going on forever and has been done to death. But one thing that I think is still missing out there is this point. There was a period, as you know, where there were loads of people discussing about how the katana is the superior weapon and we've gone past that. So there are still a few weebos out there saying this, but 
the majority of people now recognize that the katana is not the best weapon in the world. However, now I think the pendulum has swung all the way to the other side and now people who very much like European medieval swords and, and, and the effectiveness of these swords, uh, swords have finally been established so nobody really thinks now, nobody who understands swords ever thinks now that uh, uh, you know that knights were brutes bashing blunt swords at each other with no technique. We have established that, I hope. But now people say that the European medieval sword is the superior weapon and the katana are crap. This is also wrong. The katana is not a crap sword and the European medieval sword is not a crap sword in all of their different iterations because these are of course umbrella terms. If the katana or the European medieval swords were crap swords they would not have been in use for so many centuries in these cultures. You can be someone who prefers or like me for example who prefers the European medieval sword design for a variety of reasons including personal preference but you don't really need to say that then everything Japanese is crap. It also shows that you don't understand history if you do that because again why would Japanese warring clans for hundreds of years use the specific design in battle and duel if it was crap, if it just didn't work? It doesn't make sense. History erases anything that doesn't work. If something doesn't work, in a period of war, it's discarded. Things that don't really work but still are used for artistic and ceremonial reasons only come from periods of peace. But neither the medieval crossguard straight sword nor the Japanese katana come or were born in times of peace. They were born in times of continuous war. So these are both excellent sword designs. They work within their context. And if they are put one against the other in a comparative way, it is important to keep in mind that they're both exceptional designs and that maybe one design will work better than the other in certain situations. So in this situation that I just said, I would choose a, a European longsword, but that's just my personal preference. Let me know what you would choose in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, noble ones, and if you did, please remember to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content about weapons and armor. Become a noble one. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.